Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola. So today, the question is, what is a grid tied inverter? Is it legal in Nigeria? Do you need special meters to get it to work? Uh, is it safe when the power fails? So let me show you something. If you get closer, you see the red light is on. And the reason the red light, sorry, the reason red light is on is because my batteries are full and the inverter inside has told the swan to turn off. And the way it does it is by doing what is called frequency shift. And you can see the frequency is currently displaying is 555. So our normal grid frequency is 50. Um, the inverter is managed by either voltage where it tells it the grid is available or by modifying frequency to tell it to either stop producing or start producing. So voltage gets it to start producing, showing the grid, and frequency is how it gets it to go on standby or to go into error mode till the frequency is correct. Now I'm going to read you some questions and then I will explain how this works. So this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So some people on, uh, I posted something about um, using uh, grid tide inverters in Nigeria and some questions had come up and it asked me, um, is it legal? Um, can you work safely when the power goes off? Do you need special electricity meters to get them to work? So um, for background, sometime last week I lost electricity and the reason I lost electricity was while I was in the US I had made my team remove the PV inverter so that took 2250 watts off the system and I was left with 5000 and change a little under 6000 watts and it's the rainy season it's been raining almost every day since they removed it it gets very cloudy and during that time the production coming from the panels were not enough to charge the batteries when I ran my AC. So what did I do? I made them put the PV inverter back on. It was a training opportunity. And then we connected it. So if you looked earlier, what you saw was the PV inverter going into error mode. The reason it went into error mode is because the batteries are full. Now let me show you the settings we have and then I'll tell you what each does. So give me a second. So here we are, um, so our screen right now, our battery is at 100%. And once the batteries get to 100%, we can no, the PV inverter will go off because we have no need for the power that is producing. Currently, our consumption is 870 watts. Um, you see our PV inverter is only producing one watt and our, our generation from our two controllers is only 800 watts. So let me go into the settings so you can see how we set this up, okay? And then I'll explain in further details. Pardon my big fingers, here we go. I'm sorry, back. Um, gen port use. Sorry, back. So let me explain before I even go into that. So the way this system is set up, right, is we use the gen port as our input for our PV inverter. So I want to go to gen port. I'm not a very good lefty, so bear with me. Let me use my right hand. So I touch gen port. And then you see what I using the gen port as. I using it as a generator input to actually run an actual generator. I using it as a smart load output. I using it as a micro inverter. So I'm using it as a micro inverter. And if you notice, it comes on, the micro inverter comes on at 95% and switches off at 100%. The 95% is the lowest, is the highest I can go. I can go lower, but I cannot go higher. And then the 100% is where once the batteries are full, you want the inverter to go. You want the uh, grid tide inverter to go off. So how does it manage it? Um, it does what is called, first of all, in the mornings, um, once it's morning time, it sends a signal which you see, let me see, let's go back. So you see that line there? That line going to the PV inverter. Let me see if I get closer. That, okay, so it sends a signal. And what it sends, the signal it sends is actual voltage. 
it says the grid is available. So my battery inverter forms the grid. Without the battery inverter forming the grid, that inverter cannot function. In Nigeria, we don't have a smart grid and we don't have the ability to sell back to the grid. So I have to form the grid and the way I form the grid is using this inverter, the battery inverter that forms the grid. So once the battery inverter uh, forms the grid, um, that inverter comes on and starts looking for PV, starts looking for power from, it starts looking for production from the panels on the roof. Once it sees production, it does a DC conversion to AC conversion and sends AC into this inverter. Now, there are multiple, multiple ways to do it. I can put it in front of the load, but I don't do that. I'm putting it um, into the gen port where it's feeding from that inverter directly into this inverter. So this inverter forms the grid. Now this inverter also continues to communicate with that inverter based on what is happening. So you see, as my battery goes through the different stages of charge, let me go back, um, I can do up to 100 amps. That's what my BMS allows, 100 amps. Okay, so as it goes through the different states of charge, I can push in 100 amps into the batteries, which we've done. So I'm pushing 100 amps in, and then what happens is the system goes into um, the BMS starts telling the inverter to limit what can be sent to the batteries. So what will happen is um, this here, if it, if it was producing 1,800 watts, 1,900 watts, um, once the BMS tells the inverter to reduce what it's doing, this can either go to zero or it will drop to match what is coming from the PV on the inverter side to match that 40 amps, which is what the requirement is. Um, as you see, my PV production just spiked up because the microwave came on, and because, as you can see, my consumption also went up. Um, that's one thing it does. And the way it does it is by shifting frequency. So it can send, it could just alter the frequency. It could go from as little as 49.9 all the way to 54 point something, which you saw outside, and at 54 point something, the PV inverter goes silent. It goes into standby. You see it is in error mode. It's on standby till the battery percentage drops to 97%, 95 Then um, the frequency goes back to 49.9 to 50 Hertz. And then that inverter starts sending uh, juice back to this one. So I hope um, I answered all the questions. Um, is it safe? Yes, it's very safe because this inverter turns that one off. Um, if it doesn't turn it off, it, it won't be very safe. We'll damage the inverter outside and we could possibly damage this one. Is it legal? Yes, it's very legal. We're doing self-consumption, so it's all self-consumption. Nothing is going out to the grid. Um, is it eff efficient? No, it's not. Uh, what you have is you have all this production. I have eight kilowatts in panels, and look at the best I'm doing right now. It's 2,111. So I have 6,000 in production just sitting around, not doing anything and being wasted. Um, what other question? Yeah, so that's it. Um, it's safe. It's not efficient because I have way more panels than I need. But during the rainy season where we have extremely cloudy days with very poor production, I'm able to squeeze a lot into my 10 kilowatt hour battery bank. And it allows me to run my ACs at night at least, or actually during the day, it runs 24 hours a day, it allows me to run my ACs while being able to fill my batteries up. So if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you're yet to subscribe, click on the subscribe button. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. My batteries are 100%. My consumption is 2.14 and I have nothing coming from the grid and I have nothing coming from my PV inverter.